Hello and welcome to another Retro Crazy Mini Bite. You might recognise this, this was my Ultimate ZX Spectrum build. I'll put a link somewhere up here, maybe, if I remember. Okay, if not, just look it up, hey. And it's not a revisit of this that I'm doing. I'm actually doing something different. I'm going to be looking at this. This is the Smart Card version 3, and that's sold by Rotroleum.co.uk. It's about £35, or it was. It's currently out of stock as of today, which is uh, May 2022, because getting some of those chips because of the world shortage is very difficult. Now, this does a number of things. First of all, there is a Kempston compatible joystick port. It's also an SD card reader. But it also has a swappable ROM mode for normal boot and diagnostic ROM. So I'm going to leave it on diagnostic ROM and we're going to look at this. Now, we'll start off by powering this up just to show that it is working. And if you remember, this has the composite mod done, so it's currently running in composite mode. So this is fine. It does everything it's supposed to. No problem at all. So let's power this down. And let's swap this in, but in diagnostic mode. Now, like all cards, make sure the power is off before you plug this in, otherwise you're going to do irreparable damage. And when you power on, you should get a blue LED. So there's a beep. It's showing the test screen. And now it conducts a basic test in diagnostic mode to make sure that the memory itself is fine. So that's the lower 16K, it's fine. And now it's testing the upper 32K of RAM and it'll do that three times. And the only thing that'll tell us it's working is the test number will change. Test number two is now running. Test number three. And there we go. So exactly as I knew this would, it passed with flying colors. So there's a keys Kempston test. So if I select keyboard test, it'll actually test all of the functionality of your membrane keyboard or whichever keyboard you happen to have. And as I press each one, the corresponding one will change color just to show that everything is as it should. And then the special keys, which are your symbol shift, your space bar, and your caps. And obviously if you had your Kempston joystick plugged in, it would test that as well. So it's press caps plus space to quit. And that's great if you're having to test the membrane, make sure everything's running as it should be. Next, we'll look at the color palette test. And this just cycles through all of the different color palettes each time you press a key. And it'll culminate with loads of colors on the screen in blocks while we test. And eventually, it'll go through all of these different options 
just showing everything's running as it should before kicking us back to the menu. Speaker test is exactly as you would expect. Nothing exciting, but again, letting you hear that the speaker is working exactly as it should. Now we move on to the internal ROM tests. And this is checking the ROM just to see what version you've got, making sure that there is no issue with the ROM. And if you leave it, like most of these tests, it will just sit in a loop until such time as you press any key to quit. So this is an original Spectrum ROM, as it should be, because it's a 48k Spectrum under the hood. Number five is more RAM tests. And here you can see we can do upper RAM scanners, lower RAM scanners, a whole batch of tests just to make sure that everything's running as it should. So you can fill everything random, invert, rotate, and then get all that stuff. And then zero quits you back. So this lets you force checks on the RAM much more than the basic test that it does. So you can soak test things, make sure everything's running as it should. Number Number six is your main system ULA tests. And this will check a number of things in your system. So ULA first of all, so it's telling you it's detected the 48K128 and plus two types. Now, the Z80 analysis is an odd one. This one passes, but notice it says M1 test passed. Sinclair were great for using pretty much anything. They bought faulty chips and only used part of the chip. Memory was a classic example, but they also did it with the Z80. M1 output wasn't really used on pretty much most of the early ZX Spectrums. However, it is needed for certain things. This board is one of them, and it checks just to see if that signal is there and works correctly. I do actually have a machine that works absolutely perfectly but M1 test fails. Next, we've got the ear and mic tests exactly as you would expect. It's going to load and save. Uh, then you've got your 50 hertz interrupt test. And that's just to show, is it working? And that should be a smooth scroll, which it is. Snow effect test and you are expecting disruption on the screen just to show that it's running. Then we've got testing IC25 and 26. And these are the memory multiplexers, I do believe, just making sure everything is running as it should. And then your data bus. And as you can see, everything is green, so everything is fine. Now, this is not a Spectrum 128, so I don't expect the Spectrum 128 menu to work. And then zero is reset. So I'm going to power down. I'm going to swap the setting on the back over to standard, and I'm going to power it up just with the standard setting. So it should boot from SD card. So immediately it's detected what's on the SD card and it's showing you the options. Now the SD card cannot be any bigger 
than 4 gig and it has to be formatted in FAT slash FAT16. FAT32 will not work. So rather than using something like my TZX Duino, where it loads via the ear input like a standard Spectrum does, we can actually load direct from here. If I select, okay, so it's QA for up and down. Let's try running. Ah, okay, so it's QA, OP plus enter or joystick. And that, I do have to say, is a little bit quicker than loading from tape. So we should be able to select keyboard. So, so the theory is, I should be able to play this. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Yeah, I never said I was any good at this. It's also not easy when you're side on. Now, handily built into this, is a reset button. And it kicks us straight out, so even if you don't have a reset on your spectrum, this works quite nicely. Even I can't get that one wrong, surely. Okay, I don't think this is in English. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think any of the keys are predefined. Oh, that's interesting. Apparently, this might be written in something we can get into and see. However, let's try something that won't break. So as you can see, it all works. I'm sorry if that was out of focus. It may be focusing on the back of my head. So you got a lovely view of the back of my head for a few seconds there. It works really nicely. It works fine. And again, any point, we can just reset and come out. Now, during power on, the other thing you can do hold down the zero key, switch on, and you get into the boot menu. And then you can see that at this moment in time, there are a number of different ROMs that you can add in, and you can boot from any of them. 
it's all you can create your own boot rom you can have a different boot rom yeah you can go a bit crazy so for a very inexpensive card which gives you that speed of loading plus that Kempston joystick interface the diagnostic side of it for any spectrum repair is going to be phenomenal and for me that's where the investment is something I would definitely highly recommend so check out retroleum.co.uk I have to stress this is not a sponsored video it's just it's a really good card it's not overpriced at all and it's well worth grabbing one so thank you for watching I hope this has been semi enjoyable take care and I'll see you on the next retro crazy or mini bite